it's time for you to get your money's worth. So sometimes lessons like this one where we're going to talk about search volume and you're going to understand how to categorize search volume to know how many people search each thing before you write about it. It can be easy to neglect how cool this is, what the superpower you're about to have in blogging uh, at the end of this lesson because maybe you don't write, realize kind of where we've come. So I have a very, very, very bad day when I see somebody who has followed our course, our teachings to the best of their ability. They've written a hundred articles, early mornings, late nights, and I look at the site after a year, they're frustrated, nothing's happening, and I just see, oh man, they've just written on topics that are so tiny that there's just, they'll rank number one, but it's just not gonna bring any traffic in. Or the opposite, they're just way too big of topics, um, and they're just too competitive. And so, over the years, it's been a lot of gut feeling and trying things and just guessing. Now we're moving to a system that's a lot more, uh, well, systematized so that you can really have confidence that you're writing about the correct topics. Now, we've spent, I mean, hundreds of hours testing all different search analysis tools, all different methods that we've seen to try to find the best way to estimate that search volume. And I'm really excited about what we've come up with. I feel very confident that this is the right way for us to go to get this done correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out how we, can how we can categorize any search into these four buckets. Queries over 10,000, 5 to 10,000, 1 to 5,000, and under 1,000. Those are carefully crafted, the numbers that we've put in those buckets, because under 1,000, that doesn't meet our goal. And so those are ones that we probably don't want to be writing. Um, over 10,000 is fantastic, but it's often going to be uh, very competitive. It's this range, it's that one to 10,000 that, boy, if we can really know the number, that's gonna help us so much to know if they fit in that range. Those are the gold. That's what we're looking for all the time. So let me show you exactly how we're going to do it. I'm going to erase all of this and we're gonna go through one by one. Let's take this post, the rules of being a Mormon. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into Google Trends. This is how we've found and I must say before we do this, just so you have confidence in the method, is, I, I mean, I have checked hundreds of queries where we actually wrote the article and saw how much traffic we really got and compared that with trends data to try to, to see how accurate it was and where they were. It's spot on. It's really, really cool. So I see the rules of being a Mormon now this is not telling us how much search uh, there is. This is just a scale one to a hundred of times in the year where it's low, times it's high. So ignore the scale. What we're looking at is how many of these boxes are filled in. Look at all of these. This has full Google Trends data. Everything is filled in here when looking at the past 12 months. This is a query with over 10,000 10, searches per month. And we know because it has full trends data. Now let's go into Google Analytics and we'll see I actually wrote a post about that, a complete list of things Mormons can't do, members of the Church of Jesus Christ. And when I wrote that article, we see how many page views in the last 30 days. Whoa, 24,000 page views a month. Uh, that article gets 24,000, way exceeds our goal. That's incredible. And when you're, when you're writing that article, now you can have full confidence that you can put a ton of time into this because I see full trends data. This is gonna be worth it if I write that article and win. Next one, how to become a patent attorney. I'm going to search that in Google Trends. Now here, we see partial trends data. We see a graph here that mostly doesn't have data for the year, but blips up sometimes. Um, we see a box here, but these don't have enough data. And that's where we say this has between five and 10,000. If we see full trends data, it's over 10,000. 
partial trends data between 5 and 10. That is pretty cool because when I look at our, article, our website patentrebel.com, I can see how to become a patent attorney brought in 1400 page views a month. Now you say, wait, hold on. I thought we said that was probably searched between five and 10,000 times a month because it had partial trends data. But now you actually wrote it, you rank number one, and yet it's only 1400 page views a month. Well, that's okay, that's exactly right. Remember the total search volume, and then you're only gonna get a percentage of it when you rank number one, right? And we don't know how much total traffic it's going to get because you may also rank for a dozen other similar queries and there may be some semantic versions of that search. And that's all okay. It's still incredibly, incredibly helpful to know what basic bucket this fits in and I can have confidence, okay, there is a bunch of search volume here. Even if it's not full, it's partial. So I'm going to categorize that five to 10,000. Now this next one is interesting. Laptop sticking key. I put this in our examples because you're going to learn the caution of using Google Trends. Now I want you to watch, this may be a little bit of a long video, but I want you to watch all of these examples because it's so important that you understand this technique um, and you're using it properly. It is super critical to your site succeeding. So laptop sticking key, whoa almost no Google Trends data, a little bit under the related topics, but basically nothing. And there's no graph. That's the big one that I look for. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. There's so many laptops in the world with a sticking, with a sticking key that just doesn't pass the sniff test, right? And so I say, wow, how could that be? And I say, oh, people probably aren't searching laptop sticking key. They're searching keyboard sticking key. Aha, and now we are still partial, but we at least have that graph that's giving me a lot more um, confidence. What about keyboard stuck key? Aha, now we're nearly full. And so that's the caution of using Google Trends. You can't just be super literal with it. You can't just put in your search query, doesn't have anything and move on. We got to kind of use our brains. So I would categorize this one maybe between five and 10. I'm going to be tempted to say that one's over 10 just because it's such a gigantic pyramid of people with keyboards uh, and that's a common problem. Ah, I've got to think that one's over 10,000. I might disagree a little bit with the tool. That's okay, but we're really, it's still helpful to see. Here's one that when we search on, on, Google Trends, rare guppy breeds, we get nothing. And we say, well, thanks Google Trends and Jim. Thanks for the technique, buddy. Uh, now I have no idea how much traffic this, get, this gets because it has nothing on Google Trends, but it actually is still really helpful. So I say rare guppy breeds gets nothing. What if I just search guppy breeds as a whole though? And I see, aha, now we have partial trends data and we do see that graph. So I'm going to say, okay, this fits between five and 10,000 because it has partial trends data for guppy breeds, but I'm writing about rare guppy breeds. And I say, you know, as I was looking through guppy breeds and as I just Google guppy breeds, maybe I see a lot of people searching for the weird stuff and prettiest and unique and different words like that. And I say, I'll bet that rare guppy breeds is about 30% of the people who search for guppy breeds are wanting to see the cool, unique stuff. And so I say, well, guppy breeds gets between five and 10,000. If I can get 30% of that, then that's going to help us to say this is between one and 5,000 or it's under 1,000. I see, you know, I saw this several times. It's a big percentage of one that does show up in Google Trends. So I think this is between one and five. Google Trends is still helpful. Next, cost to own a horse per year. And now most of the things you search are gonna be easier than this. I've picked a whole bunch of edge cases to show you so that you'll know how to categorize even the difficult ones. A lot of them are gonna be just dead obvious. Whoa, now we see another problem nearly blank data. 
on cost to own a horse per year? There's no way. So many people are interested in how much a horse costs. It's a base of the query kind of thing. That can't be. And so what if I just cut out the per, per year now, cost to own a horse. Now we're partial, five to 10,000. And I just search horse cost. And that's definitely gonna be full trends data. That's a huge query. And so cost to own a horse per year, again, maybe I say that one's that one to 5,000. Maybe I see, ah, you know, I don't know, maybe a lot of people wouldn't search it that way, but it could rank for some of the bigger things. And so maybe I push it to the five to 10,000. Reasonable minds could differ. The tool is designed that it's gonna be okay if you if one's kind of arguable between, we're still gonna take care of that keyword. It's okay if you get a tiny bit wrong there. Can beta fish eat human food? What I want to show you in this one is you have to think about how you search it. Ah, boy, we're just barely partial here. Um, maybe we search beta fish eat human food. Still nothing. Maybe we don't need fish, and I mean, if it's human food, they're talking about how to probably how to eat it. So beta human food, okay, maybe we're kind of partial here. And so we had to work pretty hard to get it, so maybe it's that five to 10,000, probably it's one to five. And so I can actually now look on our website, fishtanksetups.com. Can beta fish eat human food? 4,353. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're right in there. It's, it's the, it was hard to decide between that one and 5,000. And for good reason, it fits kind of at the top of that range uh, if it's which one it fits in. So that's okay. Now, it was probably that five to 10 because we're not gonna get 100% of the traffic that people click. So that's just helpful in kind of knowing how to categorize those. If you're seeing any kind of partial data there, except for this bottom left box that kind of shows up for most everything. Uh, but if you're starting to see some stuff in here, certainly a graph, we're probably in that five to 10,000, even if we're changing up our search a little bit. The next one is stop dog from pulling the leash. Now, I don't even need to use Google Trends on this. I mean, think about it. The pyramid is gigantic of just people who own dogs who are walking with them, right? And I mean, virtually 100% of dogs are gonna pull at the leash. This is a very common problem. Base of the pyramid kind of query of just basic dog owner stuff. And so really, I'm just gonna say this is over 10,000. I don't even need to search it. But even if I did, I can see I have full trends data here. These next two are ones that we've written about before and we know are big winners. Camper weight and dirt bike height. These are examples we've showed before on sites that we've owned and brought in a ton of traffic. And I just wanna highlight these ones because when we were doing the original search analysis with our previous technique, we really had no idea how many people search these things. It's just gut feeling is kind of what we're going off of, of how many people search it. And you do get really good at gut feeling and just kind of estimating search volume as you go. Um, as you get really experienced and you've seen hundreds of articles and how they rank, you just get good at it. But when we wrote them, we had no idea what to expect. If we had this technique that I'm teaching you now, we would have known immediately when we search camper weight, which is kind of a body of the pyramid kind of query, right? People who buy a camper, now we're wanting to tow it, now we're wondering what the weight is, then we would see full trends data here. And at the time we wrote it, there was no competition. I'd be like over the moon excited when I saw this or saw dirt bike height. So Google Trends can be used to get very excited about a query when you see full data and something that's not too competitive. I do just wanna point out on Dirt Bike Height, it has almost everything in one missing box here. That's where you just gotta decide if it's between five and 10 or 10 plus. Um, and we're just gonna kinda estimate based on how common we think it is based on the inverted pyramid and how many times we've seen it on Google. Now I wanna talk about some that are in that real low category. These are often the very hardest to categorize to decide is it under a thousand or is it between a thousand and five thousand. This is also probably the most important one to get right. It's pretty obvious when we have Google Trends full data and we say boom over 10,000 or we have partial and we say five to 10,000. Those are pretty easy to understand. 
But now we need to talk about those queries that are low. There's nothing on Google Trends and we're just trying to get a sense of how big this could be. So let me show you how we do it. So this is best PCP air gun compressors. We rank for this on one of our sites and so I know that being number one is gonna bring in around 1600 page views a month. I type this into Google Trends and not surprisingly, we get no data whatsoever. That's correct, the tool actually did what it's supposed to. It's saying this is under 5,000 is how we've learned of what that actually means. And this is not industry knowledge. We, the reason we're doing that is because we've spent hundreds of hours testing to see what all these things mean. Because Google is the one with the data. We've gotta go to Google to get this search volume and this is the best tool we can use to actually get it. So I say crap. Now, Google Trends hasn't helped me. What I am gonna try to do is try a couple versions of this. Uh, I'm gonna cut out that word best. <sighs> Still nothing. And air gun is actually superfluous here. PCP compressors, is, that would be the same thing. Okay, we're starting to get a tiny bit of something on this, on this, like there's life in here, right, with this query. And so, that's helpful, but even if we didn't see any life there, what I'm gonna say is we're thinking about the size of the pyramid. It's a small pyramid of just air gun owners. PCP air guns are kind of the pro ones, and now we're getting people who are searching uh, best compressors. And we're saying this is definitely an apex query. And so it makes me really look at this under 1,000, but then I've also just gotta say, Okay, my site is about air guns. How many queries can I realistically even write about? And so sometimes I'm gonna take this one because for my niche, it's gonna be one of the better ones even though it's small. So I'm gonna put this one as the one to 5,000. Hopefully we're cresting that. And that is going to end up being correct. Now, what if this were a review of an individual air compressor? Now we're past even the best air compressors. Now we're a small pyramid, PCP air gun owners, they're looking for a compressor, they've looked at the best ones, and now they're looking at one specific air gun compressor, and that's where we would say, this is just under a thousand. It's too small to be writing about. I probably just shouldn't write it at all because the pyramid is small. So breathe with me you are going to have questions on where to categorize some of these. We've given you a great tool. I hope you recognize what a, kind of an innovation this is uh, for us in kind of understanding that search volume to be using Google Trends in this unique way. But you are going to have questions of where things go and how to, how to, how to categorize, especially those lower end posts. And so you've got to think back to the pyramid. That's the best thing you can do to really understand how many people are going to be searching something. So use your brain when the tool doesn't give us the data we need. Now, I do just want to make a mention, of course, we have tried all of the big search analysis tools uh, that we see, Ahrefs, SEMrush, Moz, etc. right? If those tools were accurate enough, we would 100% use them, right? 100% but we have tried them over and over and over. They are not accurate enough for estimating the gold search volumes. Those ones between 1,000 and 10,000, they're just not great. Now for the five to 10,000 and certainly 10,000 plus, they actually do pretty decent because they're taking clickstream data and extrapolating it for the whole web. And so when there's enough data that they're extrapolating from, they can be reasonably close. And so, yeah, you could use a tool like that to estimate search volumes if those volumes are over maybe 7,000, 10,000. It's probably gonna be pretty good. But for those like 2,000 page views a month, 5,000 page views a month, oh man, we've just seen them be way off, I mean way off into crazy town and we would have missed articles that could be extremely valuable for us. And so that's why we're using this method. It's just better after looking at, I mean, I've spent well over a hundred hours just looking at this problem, estimating search volume. And I think this is the best method that we've found.